I continue my quest to find another course off the beaten track, and I find myself in Scotland, which seems to have hidden gems around every corner. Today I'm in Dumfriesia on a James Braid design that is a mix of Lynx and Parkland Golf. A golf course described as one of golf's best kept secrets is about to be exposed in today's episode. And the same could be said about the golf clubs I'll be using today. And at just under 6,000 yards, I want to find out if I can make golf a little easier for me and many others by using a rather unique concept. to see one go down the first. I'd hate to have a big audience behind me. And with only 134 yards to the flag, you will notice a strange club in hand. It's a hybrid. The question is, can I play better golf with a full bag of hybrids? It takes two holes before the sight of the Solway Firth hits. I simply love playing golf with a view. And I recently read an extract from a book called Golf in the Kingdom by Michael Murphy, which read, You're making a great mistake if you think the game is made for shots. The game is meant for walking. I notice you hardly pay any attention to the walking part. You see, we all often get preoccupied by the next shot. And as I keep saying, make sure you take some time to have a good look around between each shot and golf becomes a whole lot more enjoyable. Well, third hole or third tee has just got an incredible view. A bit of draft as well. But that is uh, the Solway Firth. And tomorrow we can't see it, but we're over the other side of this estuary. Drifted, drifted. Right, we're going to make our way up to what is going to be a new, I assume, or it's freshly laid turf at least anyway, and it's a new fifth tee. And it uh, really opens up massive views of the estuary again, which is, that's what I love, as you know, and I look back down four, it's just a real good vantage point to see so much of the golf course. good surprisingly good distance control really good these things shock me a bit I'll tell you The shot I just played was a seven hybrid, and uh, I've got to say that I'm shocked as just uh, how much our versatility there's in within the whole set. But I want to go back to a bit of a question. Oh, we're going to get to folks of the week very shortly when I ask for your comments down below. But I want to know what do you think about playing a bag of hybrids? Is there still too much of a stigma attached? 
to you being able to uh, change your mindset and switch over to something like this? I know there's been a lot of questions in today's video, uh, but I'm really interested to get some feedback on is anybody taking a little bit of time to have a little bit of a browse around them? Something we've been encouraging every viewer to do. I don't even know, you might even be taking a few more photos than you might have usually. Taking a little bit less time or concern about your score and just enjoying the surroundings. So again, any feedback welcome, then I'd love to think that we're having some kind of impact on you enjoying your game a little bit more. And today's typical, I mean, the weather is pretty horrendous to be honest with you, but you can still find so much uh, absolute, well, just stunning scenery out on a golf course, even in these conditions. Okay, wow. I'm in a good today, you know. What I didn't realise was the camera was still on when I said I was playing good. I wasn't being arrogant, but uh, I had a lesson off Lou last week when we were away and uh, everything seems to be clicking. Today at least, anyway. The course started life as a nine hole layout in 1903, but soon extended to 18 holes in 1911. And the legendary James Braid added his input to the course design in 1923. Like so many golf courses, World War II impacted heavily. Powerfoot was reduced to 13 holes, and a German bomb left an imprint on the ninth hole, which still remains as an unnatural hazard. In 1949, the course was restored back to 18 holes, and remains relatively unchanged to the current day. sits on the Scottish side of the border and was a £35 green fee at this time of year, which rises slightly in the main season. The hybrid concept is from a brand called Eleven, and they also happen to be the sponsor of today's video. So before we go any further, a big shout out and a thank you to them for supporting today's episode. I'll be testing a full bag of hybrids and I will let you know my thoughts as we go. Roll out a bit more. It's the same old tale with all these clubs is that this is uh, a 64 degree with a huge wide sole of one of the wedges that are from 11. And it's that same tail, like I said, it's stigmas that are attached. You look at a club like that and you think, oh, I'm better than that, you know what I mean? That's not what a golf club's supposed to look like. But I've been in multiple bunkers and it just makes life so easy to get out of. And then if you want it's a bit of a, a flop shot, then you just use every bit of bounce, the width of the sole and just pop the damn thing up. But like I said, we like to make golf as hard as we can. Not sure how I feel about putting a head cover on each of my clubs uh, throughout every single shot or after every single shot. I'm going to stop for one second. I played seven holes and something that's just dawned on me is that just how good, first of all, are the seven holes at Powfoot. And Powfoot for me is definitely a course that is off the beaten track. I've not heard a great deal about it in the past. And I just wondered as a series off the beaten track, how much of it is sort of highlighted courses that maybe you'd not seen before and it's encouraged you to go out and play them. I'd, I'd really like to know, I mean, obviously if it has, it would be very encouraging to, to read. This is why I'm not winning at photo of the week because I am freezing here. And she's got me stood still while she's taking photos continuously to keep up a winning streak. So here it is, not ideal conditions for photography, but take your pick and comment down below. If you recall a few weeks ago I stayed at a place called The Curve in Glen Capel and I played golf at Southern S. This week I'll be staying in another property on the Calavrock estate that sits overlooking the River Nith. More from there later, I think it's time we got back to the golf. 
sit down. Oh, good distance control again, you know. I think the thing is, and I mentioned about the sort of stigma idea, is that for me, two comments really, I said about stigma, I also mentioned about that I've played well today. And there was actually Tracy behind the camera who suggested, yeah, but am I playing well because I'm swinging hybrids? And there's half a truth in that because everything becomes a little bit easier because you don't feel as though you need as much effort required. My swing all seemed to synchronize a little bit better and the sort of timing and tempo was better. So yeah, unbeknown to me, it was a really good comment made by Tracy that, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, Lewis, great lesson. But I think that idea of just calming everything down a little bit and letting the club do the work is actually quite a, yeah, it's a real valid point. Oh, big break. I just got to that stage of the round where I'm absolutely Baltic, to be honest with you, and uh, one hole to go. I can't wait to get to our accommodation later, which is in familiar territory, and I've not been there yet, but it looks pretty decent, so don't go anywhere. Right, that is us. We've got about a 15 minute drive onto uh, our accommodation. Hot bath is what is needed right now, and something nice to eat, so, and I can't wait to show you around this place as well, to be honest with you. I think it's this blue box here. There it is. Well, that's the view from our property. And uh, it's just this place. So it's on the part of the Calave Rock estate where we stayed in the curve not so long ago and I'll give you more details but uh, bags are unpacked and this is where we're going to be staying for the next couple of nights and that's going to be the view tomorrow morning it'd be nice if the sun was shining we can't have everything and we awoke to some of the most challenging weather we have faced so far to film an episode Right, what you've seen so far is, I don't know if you know what hole we're on, three or four holes of just absolute brutal conditions. That flag isn't doing anywhere near because we're hunkered down a little bit here. It is absolutely horrendous and I just don't know how, if we can actually get this one finished.